Jimmy, thanks for joining us today, man. I know it's one of those situations we keep bringing up to all the coaches and players that we've interviewed so far about uh, this very unique situation that we've never been in. Uh, I guess talk about you know your experience with it, what happened uh, when you guys got the Nationals, and uh, the drive back to, from Sioux Falls had to be uh, had to be an interesting one. Yeah, I mean, uh, we were up there training for two days already and, um, you know, getting our, our weights under control. Uh, we literally just got done food shopping as coaches and uh, Dallas and John got back and um, I received a call and um, they let me know that, you know, they were going to be canceling the event about 14 hours before weigh-ins. Um, you know, as we were sitting there, you know, what? how yeah. do we present this? You know, that was the first thought. And um, you know, it was it was a pretty emotional time, not for just uh, the athletes. I think all of us and uh, the families were all coming in. Uh, you know, we, there was a lot of talk about going to wristbands and families only and everything else uh, the day before. And we I had just left a NCAA meeting um, with the championships committee and everything else. Um, probably about a half hour before we got the call. And, um, you know, hardest thing I've ever had to do is sit down and, and tell all those kids and those seniors, especially, uh, you know, that, that this is it, you know, and on our sport, it's very difficult, not that it's easy in any other, but it's extremely difficult to qualify, mm -hmm. um, you know, toughest region in the country, arguably, uh, all these top guys. So, you know, you never know, this might be some of those kids only shot yeah. to ever compete at CA championship. So, you know, it's, uh. You know, there, there isn't any pro for us in this sport. You know, it's these guys don't have WWE careers in front of them. Right. You know, they're a little small for that. But, um, you know, it, it's this is their this is their pinnacle for a lot of them. And, uh, you know, it hits a lot of them hard. It hits all of us hard. But, um, you know, it's we're wrestlers. You know, it's it's a grind. It's a sport where, you know, you get beat down a lot. So I think. Uh, you know, we can handle that. It's just really unfortunate for, for all these winter sports, especially not being given another opportunity now. Yeah, and it's too what I've talked about with all the other coaches from winter and, um, you know, like women's basketball. I talked to Katie Falco and was talking to Brad about it too uh, in our first episode about how you guys can't do much about it, though. You know, it's it's got to be sad, but yeah. I'm sure you guys, you know, it still hurts, but you have a mindset that helps a little bit knowing that you guys couldn't uh, do anything about this. It's just something that is affecting the entire world, and that has to make you feel yeah. a little bit better, I guess. Yeah, I, I, it's a better way to put it than I, I probably have dealt with it, TJ, to be honest. It's, um, you know, but yeah, everybody's dealing with it. It's something that, you know, not – not it's not singular to us it's not singular to Linwood. this is a worldwide uh thing going on it's it's just uh you know these seniors especially i think in the the winter sports segments just i mean we were there we were training for two days you know it's it's hours not days before weigh-ins or the competition start hours so yeah the um the immediate reaction out of me was just kind of a a fear in a way to to how do we explain it to these guys and and one, how fast can we get them the heck out of Sioux Falls? Yeah. So uh, we were on a three and a half hour hold, I think, with the travel agency to try to get flights back from Jeez. Sioux Falls. So wow, um, yeah, it was. Um, it's something you know I'll never forget um, in terms of having to speak with our team about that. That was uh, that was really tough. Whenever you guys saw the NBA and these other leagues going down, um, shutting down because of the pandemic, did you? expect the NCAA to, to fall in line? It seemed like it was going to go that way, or were you guys just saying, hey, let's just stay focused until we hear something official? Yeah, I, I mean, I think we we had um, an idea that there was a chance that some of that might happen. I think deep down we just thought, we're here. We don't care if there's a fan in the stands or not. Uh, you know, just let them scrap. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a physical sport. It's very hands-on. Um, you know, we were kind of probably selfish in our thinking, you know, let, let's just roll. Let, let's rock. Let's let's let, let these 180 kids that have qualified here go and see who the top 80 are and the 10 NCAA champs. So, you know, let, let's do this over the course of the next 48 hours. And, um, you know, and I think that was the tougher part to swallow was, man, we're here. We're there. If, if the decision was made on uh, Tuesday, I think it would have sat a lot better. Um, but it being made on you know, uh, whatever it was, Thursday, Friday. Um, I think that hit a lot harder. Uh, we kind of 
really thought something was up. Uh, the NEI, I think it was women's basketball was going on in Sioux Falls as well. So um, they canceled that after, I think, the second round um, that day. So we saw some of those cancellations happening as well. Um, and we just kind of anticipated it. And then while we were in the, the meeting with the NCA um, and the, the entire coaches committee, we had um, started seeing rumblings through Twitter and things that the Division One wrestling tournament uh, was going to be canceled the following week. So we started posing the questions, hey, what does this do for us? There yeah. just wasn't a lot of uh, information at that time. So, yeah, I mean, it, it still seems like a weird dream. Yeah, you know, it does. I think that's the way a lot of us feel with all this going on. I mean, I'm talking to you through computer here, and I'm usually just can walk down the hall. Right. It's it's unique. It's unique, and I've been telling people that too. I said it's I'm I'm appreciative of everybody helping out with with this because I think it's important to get the thoughts of not only the coaches that were affected by it, uh, but also the student athletes that didn't get a chance to compete, and yeah. even the spring sports didn't get a chance to compete pretty much their entire yeah. season. So it hits it hits everywhere. Right, it, it really does. Yeah, so I, I let's move forward um, and and go with the positive <clears throat> sides of things. You know, the seniors uh, that just put their their blood, sweat, and tears into their careers. Um, obviously, Chachi a national champion last year, and it just breaks your heart to see that he can't compete for uh, for back to back. But talk about on the positive side what they uh, what they've done for this program and uh, how they moved you guys forward. Yeah, I mean we've had a. A tremendous group of seniors this year um probably uh you know guys like chuch and uh danny swan um you know those those type of guys that have been with us for five years now i remember spending a lot of time recruiting uh those guys especially danny he was a he was a long time recruit you know and everything else and being able to watch these guys develop over the past five years to see where where chuch has has come you know um, to go from a fifth in the state to the wrestler of the year in all of division two, uh, in 2019 to, you know, even have the season he's had this year, um, you know, dealt with some injuries, you know, that giant target on your back, yeah. uh, being the NCAA wrestler of the year and, and everything else. Um, and he took some losses and I think, um, him going into NCAAs was the, the loosest that I'd seen him, the weight off his back. he, it really affected him um, not being able to defend. Um, as he said a hundred times, you know, when you walk into that tournament, everybody's zero and zero. It doesn't right. matter what happened before. And it was just about getting to the dance. And um, and Danny's kind of been that way throughout his whole career. You know, Danny's he's a, he's a, a different character when it comes to personalities. Um, he tests my patience a few times throughout <laughs> five years. Uh, but a kid who's competed at 125, 133, 141, and then 149 for us, um, you know, I think a real team player uh, when it came to, you know, bringing in a kid like Colby Smith and, and having that conversation mm -hmm. with Danny to, hey, man, I think your style and everything works. You going up to 49, I, I mean, I think we were feeding Danny uh, before weigh-ins multiple times this year. And mm -hmm. uh, looking back to his freshman year at 125, we were, we were pulling food away from him as much as we possibly could. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, a real transition, but I think that's just a testament to, to the leaders that those guys are and the way it rubs off on everybody else. You know, uh, some of the harder workers in our room, you know, I, I'm always astonished with those hot Kez boys and, and how hard they train and, and everything they're doing. I, I'm literally getting texts from them now and Isaac and Chach and they're running three miles a day back up, uh, in the Chicago area right now, wow. every day, you know, it's just, it's something special that we have with this group of guys and, and those seniors really are, are a big part of that. So whenever you had to tell them, um, about the cancellation <laughs> and, you know, uh, coming back, I talked to Katie Falco about this and she brought up an interesting, uh, thing is that with the last game and like for you guys, last match not happening, you know, you didn't get that closure with your seniors. Have you had a chance to talk to them directly? And have you guys maybe planned for something when this is all said and done to get together and uh, maybe compete one last time? Well, in my mind, I feel for all this. Uh, you know, I'm a little biased in the sport of wrestling. I feel for every senior across Division One, Two, and Three. Um, every kid at freshman, sophomore, junior didn't get the opportunity to compete. Now, those underclassmen do have a chance to qualify again, but. 
you know, I realistically, and um, I'm actually going to be on a call later today, I want to try to put something together for, for all those D1, 2, 3 wrestlers, throw them all in one bracket, and hey, let's run something end of June or something. Hopefully when this stuff dies down, let's just finish it. Yeah. You know, and it's not going to be an official NCAA sanction, but all those qualifiers who lost the opportunity to compete. We've talked about it um, with some of those individuals. Some, um, you know, it's uh, it's one that you got to kind of let sit and hurt, I think. And, and the big things that we've talked about with our guys is this is the toughest thing that you deal with in life. You know, it, this is – just going to make you better for it life's going to beat you down it's going to do a lot of things that you don't want to do and um being at the age that you are you know you you almost feel invincible and then right. you start realizing you know what adult life is like sometimes and uh you know so we're trying to just manage this and, and understand that you know whatever's thrown in front of us we have to deal with it and i think this whole situation is kind of teaching kids a lot of that Moving forward um, to next season, you know, uh, talk about what yeah. the seniors and what a lot of these guys this year did and uh, just your excitement for, for next season and beyond with some of these guys, as you mentioned, some of these transfers that have a lot of time here at Lindenwood that uh, are standout performers. Yeah. I mean, I, we've talked about on the podcast before. You guys just keep, you know, going up and raising the bar. So uh, talk about the future. <laughs> yeah, you know, the future is really bright for Lindenwood Wrestling. You know, we're – we're fortunate to have a good group coming back. Um, we lose, obviously, some seniors that are extremely important and vital to our program. Um, but you know what? I, I think the example they've set has really paved the path for a lot of these guys. You know, having guys like Tanner Hitchcock, who's kind of uh, sometimes doesn't get the, the the notice that I really believe he deserves. You know, the kid's a sophomore. He's a two-time regional champion, a two-time NCAA qualifier. Um you know, we've never had a four-time regional champion in our program's uh, history in the NCAA era. I mean, that kid's got a chance to do it, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, that's something special. You know, uh, you know, you look at all of it, a guy like Chach, he's only got one regional championship uh, in his whole career. Um, Tanner's already got two, you know. A uh, guy like Colby Smith, you know, who's been uh, an undefeated season, you know, taken away from him here this year. You know, it's a tough pill to swallow. And he wanted his big picture up on our two-timers wall. You know, right. that was a big thing. Won it. Um, you know, but guys like them, um, guys that did some spot starting for us, like Jack Tang and uh, Gavin Londoff, who's a returning All-American coming off a red shirt. Uh, getting Colton Clampeel back, you know, who had, uh, you know, a season-ending injury in the first event this year. Abner Romero, who's been – phenomenal phenomenal uh, pickup for us at semester um and our heavyweight crew you know we got a good group up there you know um that have some really quality experience and everything else um you know it's just kind of finding our niche where some of these guys are going to fit into the lineup um which is difficult right now you know your concern is that you're hoping that they don't get too fat over <laughs> over this time <laughs> right. I, you know i've gained about 18 pounds myself so <laughs> there ain't uh, much to do, but, um, you know, we just keep talking to him about trying to find, you know, 30 minutes a day to, to get something creative in, um, to concentrate on their academics right now. Cause you know, that's the biggest concern for us is, um, these kids that, um, you know, a lot of us are pretty kinesthetic learners. We got to be in the classroom in, in our sport. You know, it's, it's really hands-on for a lot of us. Um, I think that's just the mentality for, for many of the kids in, in the sport of wrestling and having to do this online components difficult. So just, gaining understandings but um from a future standpoint i mean it looks pretty bright for our program but kids got to go out and earn it we're looking forward to the program's future and uh, again just some exciting times this year unfortunately just cut short but looking forward to uh moving forward with these guys coming up in the next few years jimmy appreciate your time before we let you go what are you guys doing in quarantine i've been asking everybody that uh you got your kids at home is it uh is it everybody kind of pulling their hair out yet or is it uh, has it been all right it's uh if i watch frozen 2 one more time i think i might lose my mind but uh you know it's i got a three and a one-year-old little girl so uh finding nap time to do things like this or uh you know trying to get around you know it, it it's uh it's been difficult um you know kids are pretty cooped up in here i think my wife and i are feel a little cooped up but uh you know it's just trying to go on a walk when we can just trying to you know, get the kids and, and realize that, you know, everybody's going through it, you know, just trying to, to keep the kids happy. But, 
it's a lot of Disney Plus, that's for sure. <laughs> this time. It's not terrible. I, I'm getting into that Disney Plus. There's a lot on there, actually. I, I dig it. Yeah, yeah. I got my wife into uh, the, the Curse of Oak Island show now, so oh, we're watching go. a lot of that and uh, <laughs> getting into it. She wants to be a treasure hunter, I think, all of a sudden. But, there you uh, go. Yeah. Hey, a nice change of career. I like that. I mean, it kind of gives you some dreams here when you've got some time to think and, and watch some things, so that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, we're learning. <laughs> well, Jimmy, thanks for your time, man. Uh, your family, please uh, just keep them safe and healthy. You be safe and healthy as well, and we appreciate your time. We'll talk to you soon. Not a problem. Thanks, TJ. You as well, buddy.